In the previous episode of our series on building scalable applications in the cloud, I showed you how to set up your application tier. Now I'm going to show you how to set up a distributed cache to help increase the performance of your scalable applications. In the first video of this series, we introduced the reference architecture seen here. And in subsequent videos, we discussed the load balancing and application tiers. Now we're going to discuss the caching tier and talk about how a caching solution, and in particular a distributed cache, can provide performance enhancements to your scalable application. Now caching in its purest form can dramatically decrease the load on the database by caching data objects that the application servers are frequently accessing. Now this is particularly true in read intensive applications and in the vast majority of applications that RightScale has been exposed to, uh, read to write ratios are generally very high. 5 to 1 is very common and we've even seen 20 and sometimes even 50 to 1. Now there are some costs to caching. You do have to modify your application so there's a little bit of complexity there. In the old school way, you had your application read from the database when it needed something. If you're going to use caching, your application needs to be changed to look in the cache first. If it doesn't see what it needs, then it reads it from the database, then it populates the cache. So the next time a different application server or itself needs that object, it's available in the cache. Now there are also additional instance hours to support the cache. If you're going to run a distributed cache, which is what we'll recommend here and we'll talk about more in a moment, you're going to have additional servers running to support that cache. And as such, you'll have to pay for the infrastructure cost for those servers. Now when it comes to caching, RightScale's recommended best practice is to have a separate caching tier that's dedicated to caching and implements a distributed cache. Now caching can be, can be implemented on each application server. That is, you can have your memcached, for example, co-resident with your PHP application server or your Tomcat application server. But that really prevents the use of a distributed cache, particularly in a scalable array scenario, in which you'll constantly have servers jumping into and out of that caching pool. And as such, it leads to application complexity and database performance degradation as the caching is pool is constantly repopulated. So if you are going to use a local cache, we recommend it only used on the co-resident application server, but we do recommend using a separate distributed cache whenever possible. What instance size and count should you use for your caching tier? Basically, how many servers and what instance size should they be? Well, what we recommend is you determine your application's memory caching footprint. And what we mean by that is try to determine, in terms of RAM, how much would you need to cache the most frequently requested objects and then select an instance size and a count that will spread that load over several servers. Now we recommend spreading it over several servers for a couple reasons. The first is that it eliminates that single point of failure. For example, currently Amazon has a uh, M2.quad XL which has 68.4 gigabytes of RAM available. Now that's more than enough RAM for probably almost every application in terms of caching, but if that particular server was to go down, you've lost your entire cache. So again, to prevent that loss of uh, the entire cache, that single point of failure, we recommend you spread your caching tier across multiple servers. Now with that said, we also distribute, recommend distributing the caching servers across availability zones. And you've heard this before in terms of the load balancing and application tiers. We always recommend spreading that across the availability zones for availability and reliability purposes. Now we also recommend you over provision if possible. For example, suppose you determined your memory caching footprint and you, ch you thought that four M1 larges would suffice for your caching tier. Well, maybe if you could fire up six or seven or even eight, that gives you some room to grow and prevents scrambling to add caching servers at a later date. Now with that said, manually scaling of caching servers is possible, but it's a non-trivial process. It generally involves an application restart so that the application servers are now aware of the new servers within the pool and also database performance degradation. We liken it here to a, uh, a card game in which the caching servers are the players in the card game and the database is the dealer. And in this particular card game you deal out the entire deck every time. Well if suddenly you have new player or new players in the game, well the, the dealer, the database, needs to pull all those cards back and redistribute them. So that's quite a hit to the dealer. The database is going to undergo some performance degradation as it constantly reshuffles those data objects. Now with that said, we also recommend you set your time to live, your TTLs, to expire. You can set them to very long periods if you want, but we always recommend you set them to expire in case you ever do need to add caching servers, because in that case, the algorithm in which is used to determine which object goes onto which caching server, that may change over time. And if you have a TTL that's never set to expire, you can end out with a caching server with an object in memory that'll never be accessed, and it's just there chewing up resources and you're paying for those resources without getting any benefit from them. 
Now as we discussed at the beginning of this video, read intensive applications can see significant performance increases with the use of a caching solution. Database writes don't utilize the caching tier, and as such, a write intensive application will not realize the same benefits as an application that is read intensive. However, any time a database access can be eliminated, this represents a performance gain for the application as a whole, so caching solutions are a generally recommended best practice. WriteScale has partnered with several third party providers that can assist with caching implementations, including solutions that provide dynamic scaling of the caching tier. Please contact us here at WriteScale if you'd like additional details on these solutions. So now that we've set up the caching tier, in the next episode, I'll show you how to set up your database.